Strength training for runners can result in greater efficiency and faster running times. To determine what exercises are best, let's start by looking at the muscular demands of running. Research by Leinhardt and colleagues showed that some of the key muscles used during running include the quadriceps, gluteus medius, and the soleus, with peak forces reaching up to 2.7, 4, and 6.6 .6 times body weight respectively. Dorn and colleagues found similar results when comparing running speed on muscle performance. At slower speeds, about 7 minutes and 40 seconds a mile, the soleus and quadriceps elicited significantly higher peak forces compared to other muscles. However, as running speed increased, there was a noticeable shift in muscular demand, with the rectus femoris, glute max, iliopsoas, and hamstrings all demonstrating an increase in peak forces. At sprinting speeds, peak forces were highest in the iliopsoas and hamstrings, each around nine times body weight. Generally, the primary strategy for initially increasing running speed is to increase stride length. This is achieved by forcefully pushing off the ground, which is why you see such a large contribution from the ankle plantar flexors, or more specifically, the soleus. This strategy also results in a longer stance time, which can lead to increased effort from both the quadriceps and the gluteus medius. As running speed increases and approaches sprinting, the dominant strategy shifts towards increasing stride frequency. This results in pushing on the ground more often, which is achieved primarily from generating power from the hip muscles, such as the iliopsoas and hamstrings. This information helps provide insight into exercise selection, but you also need to consider the performance attributes you're looking to improve. For running, this often includes increasing neuromuscular strength and control, power, rate of force development, and tendon stiffness, to name a few. Therefore, exercises will be divided into these categories, plyometrics, explosive resistance, and strength exercises with emphasis on different muscle groups. For each, I will review two exercise options, an option A and an option B. I will also review two additional exercises if you're performing sprinting, one for the hamstrings and one for the hip flexors. Plyometric option A, diagonal pogo jumps for three sets of 30 to 60 seconds. Place hands on hips and perform quick diagonal jumps off both feet while keeping knees relatively straight. Focus on springing off your feet and spending as little time on the ground as possible. You can start with smaller jumps and over time, progress by increasing the height of each jump. Plyometric option B. Drop jump for three sets of six repetitions. Step off an elevated surface and then immediately jump up as quickly as you can. The goal is to have a short ground contact time. Therefore, focus on landing with minimal knee bend and spending as little time on the ground as possible. It is recommended using a box or object no more than two feet tall so you can emphasize a quick and explosive jump. Explosive resistance option A. The box jumps for three sets of six repetitions. Start tall with hands overhead. Quickly squat down and then jump up as high as you can, landing softly on a box. Step down and repeat. During the jump, focus on achieving triple extension, meaning your ankles, knees, and hips are fully extended in midair. Start with the lower box and increase the height over time, as long as you are able to perform with optimal technique. Explosive resistance option B. Explosive step up for three sets of six repetitions on each leg. Forcefully drive your foot down into a box, quickly step up and stand tall, finishing with the opposite knee high and arms in a running motion. It is important that the step or object is no more than one to two feet in height. This allows you to focus on an explosive step with the lead leg and minimize push off on the back foot. You can progress the exercise by adding weight as long as you are able to maintain an explosive drive and demonstrate good movement quality. Quadricep strength option A. Lateral step down for three sets of six to 12 repetitions on each leg. Stand on an elevated surface, squat down, and tap your opposite heel to the ground. Keep your chest upright and let your knee drive over your toes. Find an appropriate starting height and increase over time, 
adding weight as needed. Quadricep strength option B. Rear foot elevated split squat for three sets of six to 12 repetitions on each leg. Elevate your back foot on a bench and while keeping your chest upright, slowly lower down until the back knee hovers just above the ground. During each repetition, focus on keeping most of your weight on the front leg. If you need, hold onto a wall or object for balance. Glute strength option A, single leg deadlift for three sets of six to 12 repetitions on each leg. Stand on one leg with a slight bend in your knee. Hinge in your hips while keeping a flat back and slowly lower your trunk until it is about parallel with the ground. Squeeze your glute as you return back to the start. If you need, hold onto a wall or object for balance. Glute strength option B, side plank hip abduction for three sets of six to 12 repetitions on each leg. Set up in a side plank with your elbow under your shoulder, feet stacked, and in a straight line from head to toes. Slowly lift your top leg up and down under control. If this is too hard, start with a side plank hold and build up to hip abduction as tolerated. Or if this is too easy, you can add resistance by placing a band around the knees. Ankle plantar flexion strength option A. Single leg deficit heel raise for three sets of six to 12 repetitions on each leg. Stand on the edge of an object on one leg, rise up on the ball of your foot as high as you can and squeeze your calf at the top. Slowly lower yourself down until you feel a stretch in your calf and then repeat. Ankle plantar flexion strength option B. Seated deficit heel raise for three sets of six to 12 repetitions. Sit with your feet on an elevated surface, knees bent to 90 degrees, and place a barbell, dumbbells, or another weight on your thighs. Lift the heels up as high as you can, squeezing your calves at the top, and then lower back down. Focus on moving with a slow and controlled tempo during each repetition. Hamstring strength for sprinting. Nordic hamstring curl for three sets of four to six repetitions. Set up in a tall kneeling position with knees on a pad and your feet secured. Keeping your hips straight, slowly lower down using your hamstrings, trying to resist falling forward. Push yourself back up and repeat. Hip flexor strength for sprinting. Banded hip flexion for three sets of six to 12 repetitions on each leg. Place a band around your feet, lean against a wall, and then drive your knee up as high as you can while keeping your spine straight. Hold the top for one to two seconds and then slowly return to the start. Complete all repetitions on one leg before switching sides. A weekly program for a recreational runner might look something like this. Exercises are performed at least two days a week, while ideally allowing for at least 24 hours of rest between exercises and hard running sessions. If you are sprinting, you will also want to consider implementing hamstring and hip flexor specific exercises. The strength exercises should be challenging. This means that each set is not a maximal effort, but rather you're stopping two to four repetitions shy of failure. It is recommended you perform these exercises for at least eight to 12 weeks, progressing weight and effort as tolerated. And finally, there's often a misconception that runners have to perform higher repetitions. However, the intention with these lower repetitions is to enhance neuromuscular characteristics you do not normally get with endurance running, such as improving tendon stiffness. So why would you strength train as a runner? While at this moment, there is not sufficient evidence to say that strength training will reduce your risk of running related injuries. It might, but the primary reason that it is beneficial is because it can enhance performance. Specifically, it can improve your running economy, or in other words, the energy cost of running at a sub-maximal intensity. Additionally, it can help improve anaerobic qualities, such as your maximal speed and anaerobic capacity. Other key benefits of strength training and plyometrics are to help increase bone density and reduce the risk of sarcopenia, both of which are very beneficial for overall health, function, and quality of life.
So in summary, these exercises are specifically chosen because they take into consideration the specific demands observed during running. These exercises include plyometrics, explosive resistance, and strength specific exercises, since using this combination has been shown to positively affect performance in runners. The programming and parameters outlined can serve as a helpful guideline, but understand these are only some options. Feel free to substitute in other exercises based on your individual preferences. These can be skips, hurdle jumps, Olympic lifts, med ball throws, squats, deadlifts, etc. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, tap that like button down below, subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. And if you have any questions or suggestions on future content, you can drop those in the comments below. Until next time.